Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Ope. Everyone. <laughs> Some clowns in the studio. Yes, right? I don't know what it is. They are making you laugh. Don't, the, don't mind them. Ojinika Ope. You see how we stories trending around the world. Yes. And she's in purple, yes. royal color. Yes. Having just arrived from going to England to see the king. <laughs> now, wow, this, this advertisement <laughs> is called advertisement of London, England, and the king. What's the obsession? Good morning, Dr. Abati. How good are you morning. this morning? I'm good. I'm Perfect. Good, yeah. good morning, Ayo. My Ayomi day. You know I haven't called you Ayomi day yes, in a long actually. time. How are you? I'm good. Uh, good morning, Ayo. Uh, thank refine. you for the Abido Shaker gift you gave me yesterday. <laughs> must you, you, must that you tell down. everybody. Must you tell ah, everybody. Why <laughs> I take the Abido Shaker and I spread the Abido Shaker? Well, all right. Must that be? Ayomi day. We had our favorite Niger wife here taking charge when I was gone. Thank you, Vimbai, again. I forgot to do that yesterday. Well, all right. Well, let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the release of 22 abducted students and staff of the Federal University in Gozo, Zamfara State, who were kidnapped from the institution in September 2023 by terrorists. On Monday, the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Ribadu, welcomed the abducted persons during an emotional ceremony in Abuja, where he stated that no ransom was paid to secure the release of the abductees and that over a thousand of such victims have been released so far without any noise and with complete respect to their privacy since President Bola Ahmed Tinubu assumed office on May 29, 2023. This is yet again a success story in our efforts to free all those being unlawfully held in captivity. We have so far released over a thousand, over a thousand of such victims without noise. Going forward, we are strengthening law enforcement and security measures to prevent these abductions and strengthen physical security across vulnerable communities. This work is done by our security forces, our soldiers, our armed forces, our police, our intelligence agencies. All right, we must commend the security forces, Rufai, as always. But you know, as journalists, we will always ask the questions that we need answers for. Let me take a, a reaction, uh, which is one of the questions that we've been asking. This is from Eni, who wrote, beautiful one, and it's very commendable. But all this rescue mission with no arrest of the kidnapped perpetrators is not going to help in the progress of insecurity. Arrests need to be made and culprits need to be made to face the law. Well, we've talked about this, Rufai. Remember the last time they yes. released some students in Kaduna? You did send out that tweet. We are seeing these abductees being released. Well, kudos to the Tinubu administration as well, because we have seen it like, you know, over and over again. But where are these kidnappers? Where are the terrorists? Well, here is a video of an alleged bandit, Kingpin, who goes by the name My Jaka, filmed cracking jokes freely with a Lebanese man said to be an engineer handling the Goso Sokoto Road. My Jaka is reported by Zagazola Makama, has maintained his presence on TikTok freely, boasting of how he has been carrying out attacks. You see this, uh, Rufai. Mm. This video, you know, has been circulating, and that man is there. But, you know, we talked about this, uh, about TikTok, uh, the last time we discussed that bandit that was brandishing the Naira notes. And we talked about the fact that these bandits, or whoever they are alleged to be, are out there. And our security forces need to display these people out so we can know where they are. I mean, so or what has been going on so far. Oji, you know, we are so, we live in a society where people want to be praised. Yeah. I mean, I don't do well with praises. I mean, I'm a stoic yeah. in my head. So... I'm taking at sea when people are saying it's commendable that they release them. Okay, in the spirit of praises, oh, we praise them, it's commendable that they rescued them, isn't it? But that's gallo humor. Should we even have a country where people are being kidnapped and they are parented in the first place? So that's the question. So if they want to, we praise you for rescuing them. But a country that is supposed to protect you we now have that country where people are being kidnapped and we are parading kidnapped victims. It's an achievement by the Natural, National Security Advisor where his role is supposed to have intelligence to stop the kidnapping in the first place. And when they say ransoms are not being paid, we all know the shenanigans that goes on. 
We've built a banditry ecosystem That's where the these point. people pick up people and they are seen at the back. And negotiations go on. We can go from Kankara boys to God knows what. Mm -hmm. So why can't we stop that market? That's the and that's why project. you are seeing this video on TikTok to show that these people have had so much ecosystem. I'm sure in their communities they will praise them and they are carrying guns. These are non-state actors carrying guns. Mm -hmm. But intelligence officials have been able to pick up those people. Yeah, that's the question. And you want us to praise them when they now parade the people that, that have been returned after <laughs> this conversation that goes on and say we right. should praise them. Right. So let me tell you something, Oji. Mm -hmm. We've built a state where non-state actors are dominating. And you know, the state is supposed to have the legitimacy and monopoly of violence. And if the state is losing that, then you have chaos brewing. Yeah. We are losing parts of this country, increasingly. Well, thank God those uh, abductees have been released. Uh, they spent 207 days in captivity. But you know, we just marked the 10th anniversary of uh, Chibok, and so we still have about 89 of our girls out there in captivity. In the meantime, as the world marked the 10th anniversary of the abduction of the Chibok girls, the leader of the Pan-Niger Delta Forum, Edwin Clark, has asked President Bola Ahmed Tinbu to appoint a special task force to travel to Sambisa Forest to rescue the remaining Chibok girls held in captivity. The federal government under President Tinbu should appoint a special task force with bravery soldiers Brave soldiers, competent, transparent, not nepotic, to a task task, brave task force, to be given a time limit. Their main duty is to travel at all times to Sabiza for and anywhere to search for these girls. When Jonathan said there were Boko Haram in his government, it's true. Even in his office. Every attempt made by Jonathan to save these girls, to, to, to release this, uh, uh, rescue these girls, was thwarted by the, uh, by the state government of North East. No government has given the kickboxing a priority. Well, I, I, uh, you know, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu wrote an op-ed in this week where he talked about Nigerians and the economy, uh, you know, they're going to be liberated. He also talked about the fact that his administration will make sure that no ransom will be paid. I mean, we will give kudos because we are seeing the release, but yeah. the question is still out there. Is it possible? All right. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's a big question. It, first, from the first story in terms of the release Thank God that these um, children are back home. We saw picture footage of them being received. But beyond that is that we keep saying that what is the deterrent for these kidnappings not occurring again? If there are no arrests, if there's no public show of um, punishments to deter people from doing it again, then it's, it will be, it's, it's, it's almost um, fruitless. And then the second part of the question, which you often ask is, if how were these girls released? Of course, I know they might want to keep some parts of their operations quiet because of the sensitivity of it. But I can't imagine going into a kidnapper's den, arrest and um, picking up children, mm -hmm. and there's no form of combat right. where there's exchange or loss, you know, some, some people are being apprehended. It, be it beggars belief. Is it that there was an arrangement where we say you meet them halfway? Was there an exchange? It doesn't make any sense. If I come into, even the Bible says if you go to a strong man's house to rescue something, yes. you have to defeat the strong Absolutely. man first of all. You can't just sneak in, get yeah. the girls out, and then do nothing. If for anything, at least to pick one or two people to give you intelligence, so as to arrest the situation. That's yeah. why it's very suspect. We mm. want to believe it. We want to celebrate that, that they've um, you know, adhered to their no-ransom policy. But it's difficult. Yeah. Except we're not journalists, except we're not able to ask questions, then we will take this on the surface of things. Mm. With regards to what Chief Edwin Clark said, spot on. Yeah. He mentioned something, and, I, and that's what um, picked my interest in that first story. Time limit. Yes. Whether we celebrate or not, these people already spent, since September 2023, over 100 days in captivity. 
We saw what happened with some of the rescued girls from Chibok, where some of them had already gotten pregnant, they had children of their own, and it, it, it just goes to show that the longer time they spend there, sometimes it's difficult to rehabilitate them, or they already have damaged individuals coming out. Yeah. We don't want that. So, yes, I praise them, but can we also look at the time limit in terms of the, how long these children yeah. are met, you know, I get to stay in captivity. Absolutely. So, yes, special task force. I don't know why the Chibok girls' um, rescue has become a Herculean or impossible task. If President and Bala Tinubu's administration can do that. Honestly, it will be one of the chief legacies of this administration. I like that, his chief legacy. I mean, it's a level of transparency of the government at this point. I love the fact that we are seeing these videos of these yeah. abductees being released. We also want to see videos, pictures of these terrorists, these kidnappers. Well, in the same vein, the governor of Kaduna State, or the former governor of Kaduna State, Nasiru El Rufai, has described the governor of Borno State Professor Babagana Zulum, as the best governor in Nigeria at the moment, amid recent criticism over his handling of insecurity and controversy trailing the free Chibok girls housed by the governor. El Rufai made the comment at a workshop organized for senior government officials in Borno State on Monday. The former governor also commended Zulum's leadership style in rebuilding and restoring economic hope in the state, while describing the major problem in Nigeria as leadership deficit. Speaking with journalists after the workshop, El Rufai said that the federal government is spending more on petrol subsidy than before, and that over 8 trillion naira may have been spent by the Tinubu administration to subsidize petrol, insisting that the price of petrol should have been higher than diesel presently sold at about 1,000 naira, if not for the subsidy. But the GDP government, third subsidy is back. Because we are spending more on subsidy now, about 8 trillion, than before 2020, because we realized that you, know, you cannot withdraw for subsidy if your exchange rate is it's not stable. You just have hyperinflation, so they had to relax. So no policy is has been stored, it's not just in the product. Well, we are hearing the former governor of Kaduna State speaking now. Well, also during the conference, the former governor of the state, while reacting to comments made by his successor, Governor Ubasani, about leaving behind huge debts in the state, said that he doesn't want to interfere in what's happening in Kaduna or play a godfather role, and that he's only visited Kaduna State five times since he left office almost a year ago. Dr. Vati, over to you. Okay, quite uh, yes. a basket full of issues. Yes. Let me start with uh, Nasir Arufai. Mm -hmm. If he says uh, Governor Zulum is the best thing since the invention of uh, toothpaste, we cannot argue with him. He says he has been to uh, Boronu State, Maiduguri, now and then. He says from the evidence of his eyes, he has seen that there is a lot of improvement in terms of life returning, in terms of improvements with regard to infrastructure, you cannot ask a man to disbelieve the evidence of his eyes. So I don't want to argue with him in that regard. And there may well be other persons who think that Professor Zulum is one of the performing governors. There may be others who will say, what criteria are you adopting? There may be others that will say, oh, what of my own governor? Uh, governor Alex Uchi, what of my own governor, Dakwabi uh -huh. uh, what of uh, Governor Babagide uh, Sonwulu of uh, Lagos State, what about his our successor? host governor? You're not asking that question. <laughs> Which successor? Ubasani, what about no, his successor? I will go to <laughs> okay, in Uba a moment. <laughs> it's one of the stories you talked about. Yes. He said, well, he has not been to uh, Kaduna uh, uh, frequently since he left office, that he had been there only just about five times. That, okay, when you help a man to get a job, uh, it's for him to do the job. But no, it's not about not being a godfather. Nobody wants a godfather. And I see Rufa is uh, intelligent enough to know that he cannot come and tell us he wants to be anybody's uh, godfather. However, Governor Basani raised questions yes. about debt and said that he met the state in debt. Now, that's the question. That's not what... He, you know, he has responded to. Absolutely His not. son was responding on his behalf. You know, that, that is the issue with regard to uh, Kaduna State. But as for, you know, going to Boronu State, if you go and visit a man, 
they invite you to come and be a resource person, a capacity uh, workshop. They give you jollof rice, they give you pepper soup. We don't expect you to say that the governor who is hosting you is not doing well. But that's that about that. Now, to go to Chief E.K. Clark, with uh, due respect, I disagree with uh, Elder Statesman Chief E.K. Clark, who says we need uh, a special task force to address uh, you know, the uh, freedom of the uh, Chibok girls who are still in captivity. Yes, uh, Chief E.K. Clark, as our father, you know, he, he spoke like a father. He wants the children to be freed yeah. and all of that. That's fine. But creating a special task force will be an additional bureaucracy. President Tinubu is constantly holding security meetings, national security meetings, and telling uh, the security chiefs, uh, I've given you marching orders. And these people, they are collecting money. Yeah. The various security agencies. Uh, so what are they doing with the billions of money that they have been collecting? Where we are is that uh, General Christopher Musa, uh, General Tauridi Lagwaja, the uh, Inspector General of Police, let them do their work. Yes. Let them free those people that are in captivity because nobody in this country, you know, should be in captivity, whether you are lowly placed or you are highly placed. And we don't need a special task force in that regard. Their security must be guaranteed. Yeah. Section 14 of the uh, Nigerian constitution makes that very clear. As for uh, the NSC uh, uh, staging a song and a dance over the rescue of uh, 28, uh, uh, you know, kidnapped, 22 yes. kidnapped persons. Wow, okay. Yeah, anybody that is rescued. Yes, yes. We will still, uh, uh, you know, thank the authorities we'll thank uh, for doing it, yes. for performing. However, UNICEF, on the same uh, subject of 22 abductees being be freed, has reminded the Nigerian government mm -hmm. that the Nigerian government has to pay attention to early warning signs. That the Nigerian government has to pay more attention to safe school security, initiative. safe school initiative. initiative yeah. And that also the Nigerian government you know, uh, needs to uh, provide child protection policies. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, these are bigger issues. Right. But the NSA, uh, you know, uh, no Ribado, uh, tells us that uh, this is an evidence that non-kinetic measures work. Okay? It, when it says non-kinetic measures, it simply means uh, they did not uh, use no force. Ransom. And then he said they didn't pay ransom. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think too many Nigerians would believe that. Mm -hmm. But he is a national security advisor. You know, he has information that may not be available uh, to the rest of us. But the, what we are saying is that no Nigerian child. Give us our girls. <laughs> Give us okay. our people. Yeah, All we are saying. Let me help you. <laughs> Giving <laughs> back <laughs> our what girls. One of these days, you people will watch an album <laughs> on this program. I hope it will sell. Well, <laughs> I hope well, it will compete with yes. uh, Davido. Yes. Your, your, yes. your big uh, Absolutely. superstar. We pray for the... <laughs> safe release of our girls and all of those people help, held in captivity. We'll take another story. The senior pastor of Dunamis International Gospel Center, Paul Eneche, has been a subject of controversy after he accused one of his congregants of the church, Vera Ayim, of giving a fake testimony on Sunday, April 15. Ayim testified in front of the congregation how she became the first graduate in her family, stating that despite the challenges she faced in life, God made it possible for her to graduate with a law degree from the National Open University of Nigeria. The pastor asked what kind of law degree to which Ayim answered, BSc in law. NHA immediately called her a liar, stating that there is no such thing as BSc in law. Well, let's take a look at that video before we come back for our discussion. From my father's side and my mother's side, nobody's a graduate. They will only end up primary or secondary school. Praise the Lord. I keep going to the essence I go to 500 level and challenges everywhere. Problem, sickness, they afflict me with leg pain and I cannot be able to finish. My mate are finished. So the law uh, program is six years. Degree in what? In. Give her, give her the mic. What kind of degree is it? My medicine is MBBS. B BSc, sir. BSc in law, sir. So the, the testimony is a lie. There is nothing like BSc in law. 
You don't have LLB. LLB. Oh dear. LLB. It's a lie. The testimony is a lie. Please go back to your seat. Is that how lawyers speak English? Please. Please, anybody who comes to this altar to share a testimony that is not true, you do it at the risk of yourself. At the risk of yourself. We are not playing here. We are not faking anything here. When she started her testimony, she talking law. I knew there was no, nothing like law. No matter how bad it is, it hasn't got to that level. Then you say you got a degree in law. What degree? BSc. Is there any lawyer here who has a BSc in law? Doctor Matty, you have a you have a degree in law. You don't have a yes, BSc in yes, law. Yes, okay. I have an LLB. <laughs> I, I won't call it. Uh, <laughs> 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 I have a BSc in law. I'm just kidding, of course. I won't call it but BS. you know what? This is a, a big story because you know the the church has come under fire. But apparently they have uh, apologized because there was that Facebook post that began circulating yeah. showing that this woman did actually graduate from that university. Our uh, pastor here. I want to give the table to you really quickly because <laughs> I know I don't want to. Uh, I want to say congratulations to, to Miss Vera. To Miss Vera, Anna, absolutely. Because she actually did graduate and she was celebrating the fact that in this month double. Yes. And it was such a beautiful story. If yes. you read it on the merit of her testimony alone, that she was the first person to have graduated. You see, she's advanced, so she did in an, in an advanced age. Now, going back to the to the reaction of Pastor Paul in Nenche, um, where he talked about the fact that it was a lie. I believe that <laughs> <laughs> what the explanation they, they, they gave was that what that has been given is that. Because of the fact that he performs a lot of miracles and people come to the church, and sometimes when you tell a very compelling story, you get support from the church members. And we see this happening a lot of times. Some people will come with sub stories that are not even factual in the hope that when they say those stories, people will put money together and bless them. Mm. And so in order to curtail that, they are very... Um, you know, careful as okay, the kind of stories that come on stage. And so he was, he caught in. But what I'll just say is that he has apologized. They visited her here and his wife. Today is the 30th anniversary, by the way, so happy anniversary. And they have, you know, bonded and just smiled. Yeah. But I want to say that it also teaches us that we have a big problem with our educational system in Nigeria. That was the point that I was is going a big to make. Problem. But you know, people are saying that that letter was not really an apology. No, Ayo, but I, I want to say <laughs> that I'm completely on the side of. Uh, uh, Pastor, Pastor Paul and Enche really, in Dr. this Abati. matter. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's an educated man, yeah, he you know, and then you have somebody, yes, yeah, is, so you have doctor. somebody in your church coming a BSc in law, <laughs> you know. Uh, so the man will say, no, it's not BSc they are, that they offer in law faculties, it's uh, LAB. But couldn't so, he have just said that? So he reacted. No, he did. He no, said, but he, he just, he said he's he not just shushed her out of the... Yes, the, but uh, I mean, no, you no, will okay. expect that somebody... <laughs> look, you spent five right, years right. to study law. So you should know what the nature of your degree is. But this is a woman who is a policewoman who tried to develop herself, got uh, a degree from the Open University. I think it's embarrassing not mm -hmm. to know uh, the degree that you got. I, I, again, I'm on the side of, uh, you know, Pastor Paul in uh, because uh, I think the Bible, uh, Matthew 18, verses uh, 12 to uh, 20, we are told about the lost flock. If uh, the, uh, the, our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you have, uh, why are you laughing? <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> no, Check your Bible. Can somebody, yeah, right. can somebody open the Bible <laughs> to, to uh, uh, Matthew 18, uh, verses eight, uh, uh, 12 to 20? He said, if you Please lose uh, 100, <laughs> you know, if you have 100 uh, uh, sheep, and then one goes astray. Yeah. Will you not uh, go and look for that one? All right. And what Pastor Enichi has done is to bring her back to the flock okay. and to say, <laughs> okay, don't worry, you probably made a mistake. So he apologized. He, has, he, he apologized. Yes, it's a way of behaving in a proper Jesus Christ like manner. All right, Dr. Yes, but let the people who go to give testimony <laughs> be prepared <laughs> and not go there and call uh, BSCA, LAB. Dr. Uh, Bati, you have used up all our time. <laughs> Go <laughs> ahead quickly. Because we want to just take your, your violence. For me, <laughs> do not. As regards the woman's matter, mm -hmm. let me make it probably a slip of tongue, or maybe because of the pressure of where she was, yeah. or you know, and everything. At least they've been able to verify that she did. Yes, there's What about some top politicians in this country that when they ask them on national TV about their university degree, yeah. they say the kids is in court, don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll do this story quickly with 30 seconds. We'll take our final Sorry, story on that sport. <laughs> in Beijing, China. What Chinese runner? He G's victory on Sunday during the Beijing half marathon is facing a probe after his win 
was called into question by Chinese internet users because a trio of African runners appeared to deliberately slow down to let him win. A video clip of the race to the finish line showed Kenya's Willie Magnet turn towards the Chinese athlete, ushering him to move ahead, while <laughs> former five kilometers world record holder Robert Keta, also from Kenya, was seen waving at he to overtake the pack, while also signaling to his counterpart from Ethiopia, Dejin Halu, to hang back as the four men ran neck to neck to the finish line. Well, the race has elicited several reactions as some Chinese internet users called for an investigation into the race, while others demanded action from the organizers. Well, in a statement on Monday, race organizers of the Beijing Municipal Sports Bureau and Chinese Athletics Association said they attach great importance to the matter and were conducting an investigation. I mean, this race has caused a lot of reactions. Look at this, Dr. Martin. This, I'm yeah, sorry, which guy uh, run is this man? Chinese <laughs> We're in Nigeria, we call it Arrange. <laughs> well, that's what you're saying. Well, all right, I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis as always on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.